Hello again and welcome to the OR Sports High School Football Roundup Show. I am Sports Editor Chris Dugan. With me, Steelers beat writer Dale Lawley. This week, Dale, we're going to talk about the high school football playoffs, WPIAL playoffs. And when you think of playoffs, you don't think of 75-degree weather like we have today. But it is November. It's playoff time. You know what else you don't think of, Chris? Hill Memorial Stadium. Good point. Hill Memorial Stadium, the venerable facility that hosts Burgettstown High School football, has never been the site of a whippy old playoff game involving the Blue Devils. But it will this this Friday night, the Blue Devils will have a playoff game. Yeah, it's a, and they're very excited here at Burgettstown for obvious reasons. And uh, it, it's uh, that's quite a streak to break. They have <laughs> never held one here. Yeah. This stadium has been here for a long, long time. Longer than we have. <laughs> There are 12 local teams that have qualified for the postseason. 12 out of the 22 are in, 12 were eliminated. There are teams in the postseason in only three classifications. Nobody in uh, 6A, I almost said quad A, it's 6A now. Cannon McMillan and Peter Stancha both missed the playoffs, although Cannon McMillan, let's give some kudos to the Big Macs. They finished 5-5, five five, first non-losing season in Cannonsburg since 2008. That's a big accomplishment for uh, Cannon McMillan. Yeah, and uh, Mike Evans seems to have that program headed in, in the right direction. You, at least it appears so. Yeah, good things could be ahead for Cannon McMillan. We had no local teams in 5A this year. 4A, we have three teams in the playoffs. South Fayette, the Northwest Nine champion, was seeded number two behind Thomas Jefferson. Really no surprise there. You know, Thomas Jefferson is uh, a defending Whippeal champion in uh, AAA and is undefeated, so that's kind of expected. South Fayette is undefeated 10-0. The Lions will be playing Newcastle at 6-4. and four Did they Friday. just play Newcastle? They just played <laughs> Newcastle, and that's one of the interesting things. There are three, four classifications where there's only two conferences, and what the Whippeal did in 6A and 5A was just cross-match teams one conference against the other in the first round. But they did not do that in 4A. Yeah, and I think one of the reasons for that was because Ringgold had actually beaten a couple of those teams in the other conference that were playoff teams, and it would have been difficult to, to put Ringgold behind those teams that they had beaten in the playoffs, so they just kind of threw out... Seeded one through eight. Seeded one through eight, and, and, and if it's a rematch, it's a rematch. Now, this is a rematch, as you said. South Fayette beat Newcastle 37-13 on October 7th. That Very was, rainy night. Yes, yeah, so it was a rainy night. <laughs> That was a game when Giovanni Love rushed for 308 yards for South Fayette. This time, I don't think South Fayette's going to be able to run the ball like that this time. But South Fayette sure can't pass the ball. Yeah, and they're going to, I mean, that's what they want to do typically. They want to come out and try to establish that passing game, get a lead, and then force the other team to try to keep up. Uh, they did a nice job in that game. Newcastle's quarterback is a, is a multi, is, is a dual, dual threat, threat kind of guy. And they did a nice job of keeping him from getting out of the pocket, and that really uh, was the difference in that football game, along with Love going for 300 yards. Yeah, yeah it was a close game <laughs> yeah. through halftime. Now, another game in AAA. Ringgold is 7-2, and two, is playing at the third seed Mars, which is 8-2. and two. That's sort of a rematch. These teams met last year in the quarterfinals at Chartier's Valley. Mars won that game 35 to nothing. I don't think it's going to be 35 to nothing this year. I think Ringgold... Uh, we'll make that a lot closer game this year, and, and uh, it wouldn't surprise me if they won that football game. Now, Morris uh, last year had Isaiah Johnson, who was a 1,000-yard rusher. He got hurt against Ringgold late in the first half, didn't play at all in the second half, but Morris dominated the second half. This year, Johnson is back, another 1,000-yard season, but I think uh, Ringgold's better offensively this year. Uh, George Martin's development at quarterback is a big key for them. They have, still have a good running game. Brendan Small's back. They're sort of on a roll. They're playing their best football right now. So I agree with you. I don't, I don't think this is going to be a blowout. Another game in AAA and another rematch, Dale. Bell Vernon 7-2 will play at West Mifflin. West Mifflin is 8-2. These two teams played two weeks ago in a Big Nine conference game at <laughs> Bell Vernon. Two weeks ago. Uh, West Mifflin won that game 26-9 on the road. Uh, this time I think the game might be a little closer because Bell Vernon was coming off the game against TJ where they just got spanked. They got, they got annihilated at TJ. That was a big revenge game for T, TJ. I think there might have been a little bit of a hangover effect. for. Yeah, and, and that happens. And, and typically when you see teams that play each other multiple times, when they meet in the playoffs, 
Uh, those games are, I mean, everybody's a little tighter. Uh, you don't play quite as loose. And I think that, you know, when you, when you get into those situations, it's always a play here or there, especially against a team that you're very familiar with. And just having just played these uh, two weeks ago, everybody's familiar with the guys they're going to be lining up against. Yeah. Let's move on to double A where we have some local teams playing. Washington was given the number two C behind top seeded Steel Valley. The Prexies are 9-0. and They will host Southside Beaver, 4-5 and Southside Beaver at Wash High Stadium on Friday night. Washington enters this game averaging 43 points a game. They're giving up 7.5 points a game. Those are both the second best totals in double A. The thing that I find interesting about Wash High is when's the last time a team was seeded number two in the playoffs and didn't have a running back rush for 500 yards? It is pretty amazing. Wash High is, uh, what do they have, uh, seven guys, I believe? Or they, have, like? they have five guys. Five guys. Five guys with at least 274 rushing yards. Yeah, they, they, they move the ball around pretty, pretty well, and, uh, you know, a lot's going to be put on the, on the shoulders of uh, Connor Bedillion as well in these playoffs because somebody's going to stop that Washington running game, and Wash High had better be able to get the ball to, uh, to Isaiah Robinson on the outside. Yeah, Connor Bedillion's had a real nice uh, season this year. I think in the only one game this year that he not throw a touchdown pass. Um, we mentioned the running game. Lyle Webb is the leading rusher for the Prexies, 454 yards. Southside Beaver comes into that game off a win over Waynesburg last week in a non-conference game, but Washai is a <laughs> lot better than Waynesburg. <laughs> Another double-A game has best center. The Bulldogs are in the playoffs at 3-6, and six, Dale. They're the 16 seed. They have to play at top seed at Steel Valley. We mentioned them. They're 9-0 and oh, with a lot of talent, some Division I talent on that team. Yeah, this uh, Steel Valley team is, is really loaded. They got, they've got athletes all over the football field. And best center, well, it, it, this is a, a battle-tested best center team. They've been in the playoffs. They're used to making the playoffs. I don't think they're quite used to facing a team like this in the first round. That's going to be a, a tall task. Yeah, but let's give some kudos to Coach Joe Coons and his team for making the playoffs. Dominic Fundy, Fundy, a running back for best centers, had a very good year, kind of under the radar type year, more than 1,100 yards rushing. But as we said, Steel Valley has uh, Paris Ford, Dwayne Murray, a couple of really uh, top level athletes, and then that's going to be a tough assignment for best center. Now, the winner of that game will play the winner of the 8 9 game which is short tiers Houston, seven and three, hosting Laurel, seven and three. Now the Bucks had to do a lot of work to get the home game. They had to win at Frazier last week, which they did, 14 to six. They scored a couple of touchdowns in the first quarter then held on the rest of the way. They, they got an 88 yard touchdown pass from TJ Johnston to AJ Myers. That put them up 14, nothing. And they held on. They. Uh, Fought off a couple of drives by Frazier. Myers had an interception in the end zone, which was a key play. That assured Chartier's Houston of second place. They would have been fourth place and on the road in the first round had they lost that game, and Frazier would have been at home. But they get Laurel, which is a pretty good team, at 7-3. and three. They play good football in the Newcastle area. Yeah, and uh, that, that's going to be a good game. Uh, you know, Chartier's Houston's defense, I think, is really uh, the difference on that team. I think they play very good defense. Uh, they, you know, they get enough offense for T.J. Johnson and, and, and the guys uh, get it done uh, enough to, to be a, a pretty good football team this year. Now, the question is, you know, you get past this game. Let's say they get past this game. Is that going to be enough against a very, very, very yeah. good Steel Valley team? I, I think I think Chartier's Houston got, um, I think they, they got under just a little bit. Uh, we, I think a lot of people are thinking maybe around the number six spot is where yeah. Chartier's Houston would have been. A couple notes on that game. Laurel's seven and three, but they haven't beaten a team with a winning record this year. And Short Tears Houston, they have three losses. They're the Washington, Jeanette, the third seed in A, which really you could argue that they're the second best team in A. And they lost to a triple A team, McGuffey. So there's really not a bad loss in the bunch there. Now we mentioned Burgettstown. Blue Devils finally have a home game. They come in with a record of four and five and will play Cardinal World, North Catholic, which is five and four right here at Hill Memorial Stadium. We're gonna hear from Blue Devils coach Mark Druga in just a minute. He talked to Joe Toscano about that game. Bergenstown comes in, Dale, they've, they've allowed only 20 points per game. And when I say only, that's pretty good. Um, 
only Washington and Charleroi have scored 20 points against the Blue Devils. And th you go to that Charleroi game, that was one of those games that just kind of got away from Burgettstown. They were up 17 points in the third quarter, and then the roof kind of fell in on them. But they have a nice defense. They have a lot of size. They're going to be a tough out for anybody. Yeah, and it's going to, a lot's also going to depend on Brad McLaughlin, I, not just as a quarterback, but as a defensive back and the way they move him around. And, and uh, he, he's a very good football player. He's, you know, the, the, the entire offense runs through him. If he can put some points on the board, their defense is good enough to, to limit North Catholic. Um, you know, it's, it's going to be a matter of can they put enough points on the board. Uh, if they score, the, get this game into the into the 30s for, offensively for Burgettstown, they have to feel pretty good with their defense. Now, North Catholic can score. They average 33.9 points per game. Only Washington and Steel Valley average more points per game than North Catholic in the AA ranks. But I would imagine that it, this is going to be a tough place to win for North Catholic on Friday night. The, this place is going to be filled. The Burgestown community has waited a long time to have a playoff game, so they're going to come out in full force on Friday night. As we said, Joe Toscano, assistant sports editor, had a chance to talk to Mark Druga, the Blue Devils coach, about the game against uh, North Catholic on Friday night. Let's hear that interview now. Hi, I'm Joe Toscano. I'm with Burgestown football coach Mark Druga. And Mark, uh, at the beginning of the season, what were your expectations when you looked at this team, and, and where did you think the strengths and weaknesses were? Well, my expectations for the team was to once again qualify for the AA playoffs. Um, we lost a great deal of seniors last year, and we had a core group of seniors coming back, most notably Dalton Green on the line, uh, Brian Cranick at outside linebacker, and Brad McLaughlin, who's the heart and soul of our team, coming back. But we were going to be dealing with a very young group of players, but we still expected to earn a berth into the AA playoffs. Uh, strengths and weaknesses, hands down, was Brad at quarterback, Brian on defense, and Dalton anchoring that line. But when you stick five underclassmen, and again, we're talking super underclassmen, uh, sophomores and freshmen on the line, we definitely question mark that, but they've come together fantastically under our line coaches, and I couldn't be happier with the results. Now, during the season, you had some uh, uh, you know, nice wins, and you also had some trying losses, some real close games, you know, play here, play there. Go. How, how did this team react to those low points? Were, were, were they resilient? They definitely were. Uh, obviously, Chartiers Houston, that took my heart, being the special teams coordinator. Uh, the big punt return that they had to set up the only touchdown of the game in regards to offense uh, was very trying. And then we had a chance to win at the end, and we just couldn't punch it in. Uh, unfortunately, our team could have fallen apart there. But we rose to the occasion and came back and had a sound victory and then played Washington uh, as best as we could for three quarters. And unfortunately came out obviously on the worst end of that one. But we knew that we could play with playoff teams after playing such a great Washington team. And you get a, a into the playoffs and you have a home game here at the Hill Memorial Stadium. And we, we believe that it's the first home game in this stadium's history, is that right? We believe so. I talked to some gentlemen that played in the 70s when Burgerstown was winning conference titles, uh, Terry Avelka, and he believes that we have never hosted a playoff game here. Back then, they went automatically to neutral sites, and unfortunately, we had some lean years when they expanded the playoffs in the 90s, and in the 2000s, we were always one of those lower seeds and could not get a home field game. How much nicer is it to have a game at home? I mean, what kind of advantages does it present a, a team? Incredible advantages. I know one year we went all the way up to Laurel to play when we were in single way, and that's at least an hour and 10 minutes away. It, riding on a school bus that long, it mm -hmm. takes a little bit to get up for a football game. Uh, and then also, some teams have turf, and we do not have turf, so we're at the mercy of the elements. Our field is in fantastic shape here in November, but obviously it's a little bit different running on turf than it is on natural grass. Now let's talk a little bit about the playoffs. Uh, when the uh, pairings were held on Monday, uh, where did you expect to fall and were you happy with your seed? Uh, we were extremely happy getting the sixth seed. Uh, we imagined that we were going to be playing North Catholic, but we thought possibly eight versus nine since we were both in the hunt for the home field playoff game, the last team to earn that home field game. Uh, whatever happened behind the scenes, we got six and they got 11. So we're extremely happy to be playing here on our field against North Catholic. 
Do you have any uh, information on North Catholic yet, or are you still going through the fields? What kind of team are they? Well, first and foremost, they have that Steeler connection yeah. uh, with, obviously, um, Mr. Rooney, and then trickling down with Coach Gilden, who I met last night, is a wonderful gentleman, and then obviously Coach Tomlin and Coach Porter. On top of that, they have a phenomenal running back, and their quarterback is very quick. Their team comes at you hard with their line, and on the outside, they have some great skill as well from what we've seen on the films. And we're no stranger to North Catholic football. Uh, many, or not many years ago, a few years ago, we used to scrimmage them, and we scrimmaged them the year they won the state title. So we're very familiar with North Catholic. And uh, when, when you mentioned the Steelers, the, the, the sons of, um, of, of Coach Tomlin and uh, Coach Porter play on that team, is that right? Yes, sir, they do. And uh, what kind of players are they? Are they uh, do you think they might be, have a pro future? Um, I would definitely say they have the pedigree for it. <laughs> they uh, are nice height and nice speed on the field. They're still young, so they have a few more years to develop at the high school level, but they look fantastic. And on Friday night, a 7.30 kickoff, it's going to be Burgestown against North Catholic here at Hill Memorial. You can be part of history, so make sure you get down here and see the game. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. I'd also like to thank Mark Druga for spending some time to talk about the Blue Devils game against North Catholic. Dale, let's move on to Class A playoffs. Clareton, no, no surprise, top seed. Bears are undefeated again. They're 9-0. They're hosting Avella in the first round of the playoffs. Eagles, 2-8 in the playoffs. They made it as the number 16 seed, the number 5 team out of the Tri-County South. How did Avella get in? Well, they tied for the final playoff spot with West Green, but Avella had beaten West Green 32-20 uh, to 20 way back on September the 2nd. That gave Avella the tiebreaker over West Green. Who knew? Who, yeah, who, who knew? <laughs> West, or Avella went out and lost seven of the next eight games, didn't even play a conference game last week to get in, but they were there because West Green lost 41 nothing to California. Now they're in the playoffs playing Clareton, a team they used to play regularly in, in the, the Black, Black Hills. Hills. Yeah, and, and uh, that, you know, that, was a, that was a team that, uh, you know, Clareton always had a lot of respect for Avella. They understood the situation, and they didn't run the score up on them. But that was a different coaching staff. Yes, yes this that was a Tom Nola's yeah, staff. That was Tom Nola's staff. This is a different coaching staff. And I don't know that this Clareton staff will take it easy on Avella. I think Avella, they're going to go out there, and they're going to they're give it at their all. But uh, there's just no way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but no it, way. It, it's, it's good. A nice it, it's yeah, nice, it's nice that Avella made the playoffs. It's interesting. Avella's in at 2-8, and eight, but if you look... In AAA, Beaver was the number one ranked team in the state a couple of weeks ago. They lost their last two games, finished the season with two losses, didn't make the Whippeal playoffs. That's how it goes. Now, another game in Class A, Fort Cherry is going to be home at Jim Gary Stadium. The Rangers are 8-1. and one. They're playing Stowe Rocks, which is 6-4. and four. Stowe Rocks was the fourth place team in the Big Seven. You don't just walk into Jim Gary Stadium and think you're going to win. I mean, that, you know, this Fort Cherry team is very dangerous. Uh, they've got they've got nice size as usual as, yeah. as Fort Cherry typically does. And if they can, you know, if they can if get they some can, offense they together, they can get Ryan Culberson yeah. on the corner or um, maybe use him as a uh, pass catcher. You know, they they have a chance to do something. Let's uh, delve into this game a little bit. Stowe Rocks, their opponents, the teams that beat them, thirty three and three. So Stowe Rocks has lost the uh, only really upper echelon teams, including Wash High in a non-conference game. Stowe Rocks also coached by Jason Recito. That name should sound a little familiar. He, he played his high school football at both Best Center and at Mon Valley Catholic. His father, Tony Recito, coached several teams in Washington County. Jason's going to be back in the county in McDonald. Carmichael's won the Tri-County South Conference. They're 7-2. and two. They're going to be hosting Springdale, which is 5-5. Five and five. Now, Carmichael's had a big win two weeks ago against uh, Fort Cherry in the mud for the conference championship. Last week, they play a non-conference game against a very good Bishop Canavan team. Carmichael's comes out and gets a 13-0 lead in the first quarter. All Canavan <laughs> after that. Um, it ends up, uh, I think it was 43-13, something like that. Carmichael's had a couple of interceptions, gave up 30 points in the second quarter. Yeah, that's not how you want to go into the playoffs, but uh, you, I, I would expect that Carmichael's will be fired up to, to be hosting a playoff game down there. And, you know, uh, these Tri-County South teams, you know, you, you want to be the team that gets to win. 
You want to be the team that puts the Tri-County South back on the map. So one, I, I expect one of those two teams, Fort Cherry or Carmichael's, to have a very good shot, if not only to win or to keep a close game, but to win one of these games, if not both of them. Well, Springdale comes into that game 5-5. Five and five. They have a win over a common opponent with Carmichael's. Springdale won 54-7 over Jefferson Morgan and Parker Field. Carmichael's beat Jefferson Morgan 46 0, so there's not much of a difference in those two games. Did some research. The last time Carmichael's won a game against a non conference opponent, this was stunning. They beat Bentworth the last time in 2005. It's been 11 years since Carmichael's won a non conference game or a game against an uh, outside opponent. Right. You, know, you can count playoff games in there too. Another game in Class A, Mapletown is 5-5. Five and five. Maples will play at Northgate. Northgate is the number four seed and a pretty good team. The only team they lost to was uh, Rochester, the number two seed, and that was by only four points. So that's a pretty tough uh, assignment for Mapletown to go to Northgate. Yeah, and you wonder about the health of Dylan Rush. I know, you know he came back and played last week, but uh, yeah, this, this is going to be a tough task for Mapletown going into, into a tough place like that. Um, if they can get Rush loose and, and get him going a little bit, I mean, he's going to get the football. We know yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, he, Dylan Rush was healthy again last week back in the lineup. He rushed for 164 yards on only 33 carries. That might be his low watermark for the season. <laughs> he has 1,796 yards on the season. Now, Mapleton did have a good win last week. They, they were losing to Manesson 12 nothing with less than seven minutes to go in that game, then scored 22 points to win 22 to 12. So that was, they have a little momentum going into this playoff game. Now another team from the Tri-County South, California, the third place team out of TCS. Trojans are six and four. They will play at the Canavan team that we talked about. Now that game is on Saturday. That's not a Friday night game. It's a Saturday game, 7 p.m. kickoff at Dormont Stadium. California's had a remarkable turnaround, Dale. They were two and seven last year. Dar Darren Dillo's done a real nice job with the Trojans. Can they beat Canavan, though? That's going to be tough. I mean, when you look at what Canavan went in and did to, to Carmichael's last week, that's an eye-opener. Uh, I think this is a pretty good California team, uh, but I don't know if they can hang with uh, Canavan. Yeah, California's a team that's trending upward. I would think yeah. that next year they, they can really uh, contend for the conference championship Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Trojans knocked out Wes Green from the playoff race last week, won 41 to nothing in Rogersville. Uh, Jonathan Wood, 186 rushing. And one of my favorite names, Cochise Ryan, had an interception return for a touchdown. He wins the name of the year. <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> and that does it for this week's show. Remember, playoffs start Friday night. All games at 7.30, not 7 o'clock, 7.30.